Welcome to Robotics and Automation News Webinars, where you can be part of a global event without leaving your home or office. Attend our live webinars and communicate directly with influential professionals in your industry. Hello, my name is Abdul Montakim. I'm the editor of roboticsandautomationnews.com. In this interview, I speak to Niels van der Zell, VP of Sales and Marketing at SoftBank Robotics, which is probably one of the most interesting new robotics companies in the world. SoftBank, the parent group, um, is a giant telecommunications company. Uh, SoftBank Robotics has a variety of products in the, in the market, uh, notably humanoids such as Pepper and Now. It also makes commercial cleaning robots, which is one of Niels's areas of responsibility. It's a huge market already and looks set to grow much bigger in the next few years. Niels was kind enough to talk at length extensively uh, in this wide-ranging interview. I am uh, Niels van der Zijl. Um, I am the VP uh, of Sales and Marketing for SoftBank Robotics. I'm wondering if you've got a LinkedIn page. There we go. Yes, you will find my LinkedIn page quite easily, I'm sure. Yeah, there we are. This is Neil. So, you want me to explain a little bit about my role? Yeah, please. Yeah. So, um, uh, my, my background is actually, um, I have been um, uh, with IBM for over 11 years uh, pre previously, um, where I ran the IoT division for, uh, for Europe. So, my background is very much technology, um, in uh, dominantly software. But um, more recently, I've also had some exposure in the, uh, in the services arena. Um, so one of the reasons why um, I felt compelled by, uh, by the story that uh, SoftBank put in front of me last year um, was predominantly um, the, the, the whole desire to reinvent uh, a business and to look at um, complete different business models by bringing both the physical and the digital world together. Um, and that's really, uh, that really attracted me, the opportunity to see actually how IoT has become something that this actually does monetize and does make a real difference. Um, I think there's, you know, there were too many uh, projects, so to speak, um, in regards to IoT that didn't really monetize. When this um, was introduced to me, um, they asked me to um, lead um, uh, the commercial and the marketing side of uh, our new division, SoftBank Robotics, um, in, in Europe, in EMEA. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I thought that uh, was very compelling compared to uh, what I was doing before, a new fresh challenge in an area that is, uh, that is currently booming. Um, and um, I think automation in general uh, within the industry, other than you know, what's, what's been done before in the automotive sector, um, you know, I think IoT was long, uh, long before uh, known to uh, to drive uh, numerous benefits, and the automotive industry was probably one of the the, the, the early adopters, so to speak. Um, so IoT wasn't new, but in terms of what um, what it's been do doing in the industry, it hasn't necessarily always produced the results that uh, companies were after. And uh, I felt that SoftBank Robotics was putting something in the market that could. Thank you very much, Niels. Um, so uh, just to move on from there, I mean, I do agree with you. It's a very interesting time um, for robotics because a lot of it has been over the, or until very in recent years, uh, apart from the robotic arms that we saw in uh, mainly in automotive uh, factories, a lot of robotics has been research uh, and test sort of things that were academic pursuits and projects. And commercialization is a fairly recent activity, relatively speaking. So it's quite interesting that, that you know, this humanoid, for example, these humanoids that robot, uh, SoftBank Robotics owns and develops. Pepper here, we've seen, we can see this, um, this one here that's on screen now, very well known. Uh, humanoid sort of, um, I don't know what, what, what uh, customer services it's used for, I think mainly. There, there's other ones like this now, which is probably more of a toy or something. Certainly it's presented no, more, to uh, the kids here. Yeah, yeah it's so. more the education market. But um, so, so just to, uh, to, to make it a little bit clearer, um, 
following um, the launch of the humanoid business for SoftBank uh, Robotics, which is called Pepper. Um, we, um, we as an organization um, looked into the market. I think this is probably going back as much as kind of 2018 um, and, and really looked in the market for um, models where instead of, as exactly like you say, instead of going into the kind of the marketing and more the, the kind of the playful um, areas, um, looking for areas um, in the industry that could be reinvented, um, that could make a real difference. And, and this was one of the reasons why we came out to, uh, to the cleaning industry, uh, because the cleaning industry predominantly has had, uh, you know, over the last 50 years, I, actually not a lot has changed. Um, and in terms of innovation, it's pretty much, they use the same tools. Um, maybe they've gone into microfibers, but you know, in general, there's not an awful lot of automation that has been occurring other than the very big machines that you see uh, roaming around at uh, kind of like the airports. But in terms of a, a feasible um, autonomous um, robot, um, there, was, there was nothing in the market. And that's what really um, we focus on. So as a result, um, Japan decided to, um, uh, or for you know, Shopping Robotics, uh, the, the group um, decided to kind of split the offering um, out and hence why the, the, the unit that I'm responsible for um, here in EMEA is purely responsible for uh, the WIS proposition. And um, the, uh, the other proposition that was Pepper, the humanoid business, Pepper and now, um, they're um, part of um, what our division in Paris um, is currently operating. Um, so they're, they're very different, very complementary, but very different offerings um, in, in the market. So Pepe is this one here, this uh, attractive looking, very well designed uh, robot that, um, you know, we've heard a lot about over the, over the last few years. And they've done, SoftBank has done very well with that. I can't remember details. I'll, I'll try and uh, look it up when we, we've covered a lot of robotics over the years. And I, I remember vaguely that, um, uh, SoftBank did uh, release some sales figures for Pepper, maybe. I can't remember. I'll try and look it up in a minute. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, you've, moved, you, you've been asked to um, deal with what is clearly, as you say, a very good commercial proposition, uh, the cleaning market, the commercial cleaning market, which hasn't changed much um, over many, many years. Uh, and this is the product that SoftBank and yourself are um, have developed and and are presenting to the market. Tell us when it was. Tell, tell us the development process. I mean, when was it commercially launched? And can you give us a, any insights into how how widely it's been adopted and by which sectors? A uh, few few facts and stats, if possible, about Wiz here. Of course, of course. Uh, so um, I, I think that you know, the background I've just mentioned, obviously SoftBank is a, uh, uh, is a huge uh, group. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a $96 billion organization um, and normally focused on the technology sector. Um, what, um, what we just talked about is Pepper. Um, I think that the WIS business we launched um, about May 2019 um, in uh, in Japan, and um, we then um, slowly kind of like rolled it out to uh, kind of the rest of Asia pack, um, and we actually did a launch in uh, November last year uh, at uh, the ISSA conference uh, in Las Vegas, and um, that was hugely successful at um, at the. Uh, event itself, we actually won the ISSA Innovation Award, um, which was um, really a prestigious uh, award to, uh, to achieve and uh, a real um, a good um, you know, benchmark on what, what our uh, solution can do in the market. We, um, we were planning to, um, to launch here at, in, in EMEA um, at Interclean in May. Obviously, the Interclean conference um, has been uh, postponed 
Uh, it looks like it's going to take place now in uh, early November, but it's still, um, you know, I think something that probably could move depending on what's happening with the uh, situation with Corona. In terms of um, what we've been doing in the meantime, um, we've um, we followed very quickly on. We've got globally now, as you probably uh, saw in the press, we've achieved uh, a number of 10,000 to 10,000 units of WIS deployed um, across the globe, um, of which um, about a thousand now in EMEA. Um, so we're we're gaining ground very very rapid. We see a tremendous amount of demand. Um, uh, you know, I, I can say that that's obviously um, kind of accelerated uh, quite a bit from uh, what's happened with uh, in terms of Corona. Um, we uh, we see a real uh, increase um, in the adoption um, of uh, robotics, um, where before we we may have been perceived as you know replacing uh, jobs, which um, this is actually not the case, and hence why. We actually call with our cobot um, and, and really looking at it from a from a cobotic uh, perspective. Because when you're when you're taking that approach, then you know cobots are uh, collaborate uh, uh, robots which uh, carry out uh, all the repetitive and all the, the, the strenuous task, um, which which otherwise would be performed by the uh, by the by the cleaners, obviously. Um, so. As a result, um, it's alongside working alongside the uh, um, the, the team um, to uh, to perform those tasks. So that whole robotic um, um, kind of message um, is something that we're hitting home hard uh, to to achieve. Um, you know, moving away from the kind of the more um, you know, I just said it. Um, Areas where people are, you know, airing some concerns. We 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 very much uh, looking for uh, uh, working alongside the cleaning teams um, in a collaborative um, format rather than anything else. Right. That, thank you very much for that. Uh, you know, insight and um, the numbers, especially. I think our readers particularly appreciate numbers. As I say, there a lot of them are in. Um, Surprisingly unusual fields for us, we thought we'd appeal to um, our website, would appeal to engineering types and technologists. Um, and I didn't really think about the financial side and investment side of it, but there's a lot of people who look for interesting technologies and companies and startups to invest in. But obviously SoftBank is not <laughs> by any means a startup and it's a very huge almost a hundred billion dollar global operation and it, it, it then becomes surprising that SoftBank uh, finds this kind of field very interesting, interesting enough to put money into and develop technologies which uh, SoftBank is I think is known as a telecommunications company, uh, you know it's a Japanese telecommunications company so it's kind of surprising to see that it's moving into ro robotics, but obviously it's good for the industry that it is because it's got the resources to develop very high quality products and very nice websites actually. I love these, um, you know, um, 3D things that um, you, it shows off the product really well. Uh, just just a point on that, uh, you know, you, you're, you're, you're mentioning about, you know, kind of like, you know, what we're doing in terms of, you know, yes, we're a massive group, and obviously, you know, some know something more than others. Um, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, it is a Japanese organization, so it hasn't got that same kind of level of, um, you know, publicity as, as an American company may have. But um, the, the sheer size and the investments that um, that uh, SoftBank has made um, ranges, you know, very, very, you know, companies like, uh, you know, Boston Dynamics, uh, obviously. Um, we're talking about Uber, um, Alibaba, um, Arm Holdings. You know, more and more familiar here for for the UK. They're, they are they are huge companies. Um, but the, the 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 whole foundation um, of um, uh, of kind of Massa was our um, our CEO. Um, you know, that is basically to contribute to uh, people's happiness and joy in the future of the world. His vision is actually to become the, the kind of the, the Bill Gates of robotics, uh, so to speak. So 
Um, and, you know, there is a real underlying um, tone here to bring together the, the kind of the best of breed technologies um, um, and, 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 and basically technology investments um, and, and taking a, a, an outside in strategy uh, to drive industry change and reinvention uh, using a combination of, say, Internet of Things, um, artificial intelligence, and robotics. And that's really how this has uh, become uh, kind of, well, at the point now where we, I think, I can't remember the exact number, but uh, I think we've covered now over uh, 350,000 kilometers. Um, and I think something like nine times um, around the world in terms of what our autonomous robot uh, has been able to achieve. So, and if you, if you look, look in terms of market share, um, we are roughly around 55% now um, of the uh, kind of the autonomous uh, professional cleaning market. So, so you know, we're, 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 we're striving hard. I think we're, we're getting in the right place. There's still an awful lot of work to be done. Um, I think, you know, the way I would describe it is, you know, right now we're, we're coming with, a, with an offering that does industrial um, vacuum sweeping. Um, which is, you know, a great step in the right direction um, with the right form factor. Um, and, you know, if, if, I, if, if I look at kind of like our landscape right now, um, there's an awful lot of um, application, but it's generally in the, the larger open spaces um, of um, conference centers, hotels, um, corporate um, offices, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, that landscape will evolve. And our, our, our focus is not just to look at this from uh, the cleaning industry, by the way, but it's, it's the first industry where we see a real opportunity. What we've got in the pipeline is a number of other um, uh, robots that will follow. We've got um, a scrubber dryer coming out next year, um, which you know, is really going to complement and extend the, the WIS family um, to, to drive that real reinvention in the industry. And, and that's really why um, uh, we as, as Softbank Robotics feel that um, we, we need to step up the, the automation um, to, to the industry to, again, come back to, you know, contribute to people's happiness, create a better life balance, um, create a new, um, a new way of looking at, you know, the cleaning industry. If you think about, you know, doing a cleaning job, there's kind of like two aspects to that. There's, there's other cleaners that are really taking it very serious and want to elevate themselves into a, a new level of, of quality. And they will, they will do anything to, um, how do you say it, to accelerate their career, to learn new skills and to drive um, kind of like their exp expertise forward. And they're, and they're, they're quite keen in, in, in adopting and learning new ways of working in, within the cleaning industry. And then you've got another set of, um, cleaners who are doing the cleaning because they either, either they have to do it, they haven't, they haven't got another choice, or they're doing it temporarily, but they're not, they're predominantly looking at it very traditionally and they're not necessarily um, looking at it um, to, as, a, as, as, a, as a career, so to speak. So that's the difficulty that they have in that, uh, in that sector. And that makes it for us um, extremely um, uh, good timing to enter. And, and the whole fact, what we're seeing now with the corona situation, you know, we've got many companies that are looking at, well, we've always been wanting to do robotics, but the, the timing hasn't been right because, you know, there's, there is definitely a large behavioral change that needs to be adopted within the organization. Without that um, investment from the company to, in, in terms of time specifically, to, to drive that behavioral change. This is, this is not something that's easy to uh, adopt. But when you actually start looking at it and you're, you're invested into it to make it happen, you'll tie the, um, the, the, the kind of the, the increase in, um, in cleaning standards together with the appetite of driving higher degree of consistency that people are happier to re-enter their office space um, and if you tie that all together, um, it makes it kind of like a no-brainer because, you know, we can do something 
where the cleaner now is much more focused on the, um, the less strenuous tasks in terms of cleaning the, the handrails, um, the, the, the surfaces. And especially now, um, there's more and more focus on that than ever before, where WIS at the same time will be just doing the, the large open spaces and doing the vacuuming. Um, so the feedback that we're getting from people is this is an ideal scenario um, where we um, where we really help and support the cleaning industry to do a better and more consistent job um, providing their clients with the comfort to um, to re-enter their offices. Sorry, that was probably a very long answer. But <laughs> no, absolutely no, no, no. We like long answers. Uh, we we tend to, uh, you know give as much to the readers as we as we can uh, in depth and um, uh, carefully explain so no it's uh, we really appreciate um, thorough answers I'm just looking for at this uh, story we we published a couple of um, few months ago um, yeah this must have been around the time you launched or a little bit after when you launched and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic market. I can't remember there was, uh, I was going to ask you about the potential of the market and you've give us, given us an insight into it. You've talked about, you know, uh, being, uh, having 55% of the professional cleaning market. Uh, and I was thinking that there's just massive potential in this uh, market. And I re vaguely remember there was a company, I believe in Japan, which received an order from the schools authority of Japan to supply something like, you know, 10,000 of these uh, its own robots, or maybe 1,000, I can't remember, maybe I've added a zero, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, it, it must, I don't know how much each one of them costs, and I don't know how much each one of yours costs either, but, you know, you've talked about 1,000 um, units in the EMEA and for, People like me who don't are not always sure what those acronyms mean. That means Europe, Middle East, and Asia, right? Or Africa? I, Africa. Yeah, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't know. You, you probably only deal with that, but within this area, there must be potential to sell thousands more than just one thousand. Uh, don't you think, or, or what? Um, we, uh, we, we see a, a tr tremendous uh, demand. Uh, I think it's like I said earlier, um, the conversion and transition uh, moving um, from um, a um, traditional um, cleaning staff uh, to a hybrid um, uh, model using uh, cobotics is a shift in, 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 in thinking. Um, so what you require in order to, to make that you know, work is thought leadership from their, um, right from their leadership. Um, and uh, the, the most, most companies uh, are currently looking at how can they best make that happen. In terms of um, you know, financials, you know, the, 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 the proposition is a 499, so it's, it's just shy of 500 euros um, a month. It's an, it's an OPEX model uh, that we offer. So where previously, um, in, especially in the, in the cleaning equipment um, uh, side, um, people had to make large upfront investments. And, you know, these machines, they're, they're like, you know, 15 to 20,000 uh, euros a pop. Um, so those are large upfront uh, investments that need to be made. Um, in our case, it's, it's a, you know, very straightforward um, yes, you make a commitment for uh, a longer period of time, so it's a three-year period, but it's it's uh, pretty much you know a steady opex model of, of 500 euros a month, um, and that's fully uh, fully serviced, um, includes all the upgrades and includes all the um, when I say upgrades, all the updates um, in terms of software, um, and um, it, um, it it's basically a very um, um, easy. Uh, option to adopt within the business. In terms of numbers, um, I mean, we're currently at a thousand units in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, we are um, in um, discussions about, um, with various uh, larger FM companies uh, about widespread adoption. And yeah, those, um, those, th those are large numbers. So we're, we're really talking kind of uh, 
um, in the in the in the tens of thousands of units. So I think what what, what you wanted to hear was we, we're we're seeing um, a, a large amount of um, companies that are inquiring uh, about how to adopt WIS in reality. Um, I think it's going to be uh, kind of like a slow curve um, to to drive that um, into the businesses because it's then about it's not just if you want to start it today it takes time to uh, adopt it right? it takes time to train uh, train the people to do something different than what they have done before so I, I think you know my, my prediction is that we will be somewhere in the order of, you know, fifteen thousand uh, machines in Europe by the end of this year. That is, uh, that is, that is, yeah, that's fantastic. It's um, good luck with that, and um, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure we'll be um, covering you if we if we can get any information as a, as and when you um, maybe make a new deal and partner with different companies and different. Uh, just for the audience, FM uh, means facilities management or facilities manager or something like that. Uh, FM company would mean facilities management company. What kind of facilities are you talking about? I mean, the pictures that you have used on the website and we've seen mainly, mainly office uh, types, uh, type of places. Uh, what are the kind of facilities um, can the robot operating operating and and you're getting uh inquiries from you don't have to name names but uh, the kind of facilities and are they complex or simple what, what kind of challenges uh you know are there any challenges with some facilities more so than others um yeah so i think uh you know we've, we've mentioned it uh, a little bit but just um to come back to it um, are in general we are um, operating the best in the larger open uh, open spaces um, so as an example um, you know you may find that a very modern um, kind of you know kind of greenfield building um, you know it leans itself quite well it's got uh, large corridors uh, large open spaces, large, large reception areas, etc., um, and you know, good, you know, good-sized conference rooms. Um, if you talk about more like the the older buildings, the brownfield buildings, you'll get um, you know, you get a lot of like little nooks and crannies and and like little dips, and um, you know, it's not always a the best structure in, 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 in for WIS to operate. Um, if there's, especially the older buildings, they'll have uh, different floor levels, the little, little step downs. And, um, so generally we say it, it operates best in kind of the, the greenfield buildings. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it works extremely well in the, in the, in the hotel, in the hospital, sorry, the hospitality sector. Um, we, we have got some hospitals that we are currently operating in um, as well. Um, generally, our um, best application, the, the product was designed originally um, to go for um, carpet, uh, carpeted areas. Um, and it's got a, a, a kind of a sweep brush underneath. So it does have a certain level of agitation to the, to the carpet, taking the, the dirt off the carpet, so to speak. Um, but having said that, um, we've got probably, I, I would say between 70 to 80% of our clients, um, using WIS on hard floors. So, um, so it, it, it still does an excellent job. We actually, um, changed, uh, and, and have added an extra brush, uh, specific for, you know, those, um, scenarios where. Um, the, the kind of the, the brush is a little bit leads itself a little bit better for uh, for hard uh, flooring. Um, so um, modern spaces, predominantly offices, um, uh, conference centers, um, hotels, and hospitals. We do a little bit of work now in the in the retail sector as well. Um, so we recently started doing some work in uh, with some large uh, furniture um, 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 shops. 
And um, I, I think this is slowly evolving into the other kind of uh, areas. Like, uh, for example, elderly homes. Um, and there's, there's still, I mean, obviously from the health and safety, we have to be very, very careful to make sure we make a good risk analysis. Um, even though that, you know, the software, um, which is the brain software that operates the autonomous uh, navigation software, um, it, it does um, have a very good, um, well, it's probably 12 to 18 months ahead of any other indoor navigation software out there. Um, and as a result of it, you know, if anybody does come in front of WIS while it's on one of its routes, um, it, will, it will sense that, it will stop, it will um, identify a new uh, possible route or the different options that, are, that, are, that the machine has, um, and it will then go around it. So now, you know, so from a health and safety perspective, I don't think there's anything really to worry about. Uh, there's always an emergency button. Um, on the top, but uh, obviously when you're entering things like hospitals and elderly homes and airports, we, we're, we're operating now at various airports, um, then there needs to be a, an option to basically yeah, cut it out and hence why uh, the emergency button at the top uh, of uh, is, is, is there. But um, yeah, those are the spaces that uh, we are currently seeing uh, the, the most traction. I think your estimate uh, for the number of sales, unit sales that you will get by the end of the year is probably quite conservative, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, it, sounds, it sounded um, um, good when you said it, but uh, yeah, I think there's a lot, more, um, a lot more capacity in the market, a lot more, lot more uh, pent-up demand. Not pent up. The pent up is the wrong phrase because people, you know, see a very interesting market. A lot of robotics markets are like this. Very interesting because pent up uh, demand would suggest that people have been waiting, knowing that this is what they want. But a lot of the technologies coming out now, people don't know about them. It's only when they see them they realize that would be really useful for me. Cleaning robots is something that uh, you and I obviously know because we kind of, I cover it from a journalistic point of view and you develop it. And within, you know, the, our sectors, uh, some people might know them, but a lot of people don't. People in the wider market don't know about the, these robots existing. I mean, I've always seen uh, those big cleaning machines in shopping malls where somebody's actually sitting on top of them and yeah, driving them around and sweeping the uh, floor. Uh, obviously, this is not the exact same machine, uh, but uh, yeah, you, you just imagine those kind of things or somebody pushing uh, a vacuum cleaner, an industrial vacuum cleaner, one that's autonomous, driverless and just operates by itself. Not many people know about it. Would you, would you agree? Or is, it, is it something that um, maybe not, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'm imagining that other people don't know about it. Uh, I think as soon as they're aware of it, there may be a snowball in, in, in demand, you know, becomes very large sort of uh, orders for you, translates into large orders for you. Um, so um, I think uh, under promise and, and, you know, over deliver, first of all, um, I think in terms of the, the number of units that we can deploy in, in, in Europe. Um, but, um, you know, I think that, you know, you raise a good point, Look, I think, um, there, there is a lot of unawareness in the market. Um, also because um, I think there's been so much uh, talk about um, technology and it's not always been delivered. Um, and I can tell you that if you're in the cleaning industry or in the FM industry, and, and look, I am, uh, you know, well, I, I guess after, after kind of nine months, I've got, a, I've got a very good knowledge base now of what happens in this industry. But, Look, my, uh, it wasn't my background, so I can't say that I've got a 30-year uh, expertise uh, in, the, in, in, in the cleaning industry. But there's people that have that kind of background that are working in within that uh, industry, within the larger uh, cleaning companies um, and, and, and the large FM companies. And those companies, they, they know as no other that there has been so many different um, types of um, equipment being introduced that hasn't paid off. Uh, investments have been made, you know, multi-million investments, upfront investments have been made 
to go into robotics. And, and the result of it is that they're still standing now um, in their warehouse, taking up space and not being used because they're not, they, they weren't effective. It didn't really deliver what it said on the tin. So is there awareness? Yes, in, in the specific industry, I think, especially from a technology point of view, um, uh, a lot of companies will be aware of, of the availability, but the actually, you know, the effectiveness um, and the, the, the monetization aspect of it uh, is, is or was heavily underestimated. So this is really the, 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 the piece that we're driving and we're driving it with the right ethics. And um, this is something that I really attracted me when I started looking at SoftBank because you look, I had a, I had a great career at IBM and I, I'm, I'm very loyal uh, as well because uh, I've learned an awful lot. I've enjoyed my time at IBM and, and I think it's a fantastic company. Um, one of the reasons that I really want to look into this is because I, just like you um, explained, I can see that this is kind of like the next big thing. Um, and um, I, I like to be early in that journey um, to, to drive that and help to create that reinvention and that adoption um, in the business. So, you know, in order to spread that message um, and, and to create a, a better balance and helping, I mean, for example, we haven't spoken about the well-being side. Right, but if you think about well-being, how 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 does how does well-being uh, how is it affected? Um, if you think about the cleaning industry, well, there's lots of people with sore backs, um, and there's lots of people that are actually getting quite um, quite depressed by doing you know cleaning on a day-to-day -day basis, um, and and you know kind of tunnel syndrome and and all those kind of sort of you know. Um, symptoms that are coming uh, that are coming into the cleaning industry and, and they're really holding people back because you know they have got a 50 percent turnover of staff now you can't imagine running a business um you know take uh, take a big business like uh, iss as an example you know they've got um, well, probably not now but they probably have about four hundred and fifty thousand um, um employees predominantly out there doing doing the actual cleaning frontliners um, half of that turns over every single year. So, you know, going back to the kind of the well-being aspect and making it more interesting for that, for that industry, whether you're in the cleaning industry or in a, have a robot in another industry, I think the same applies. But it's making that connection um, because we're introducing now something where, you know, it's probably a lot more interesting for a cleaner to work with a, a, a cobot or a robot um, and learning about how he can make his job and do his job to a much higher degree um, and covering um, uh, kind of like a, a better a quality of service, but as well as being able to then prove that because let's face it, um, to date, you wouldn't know if you um, hired um, a cleaner to clean the offices um, and you wouldn't know whether they vacuumed every single meter, yes or no. And I can guarantee you that um, it, it probably what they call spot cleaning. Um, they've looked where the dirt was and they've just cleaned that, that part. So now, as a result, you know, you can actually see from the, um, from the uh, there's an application on it's called Wiz Connect, which basically provides you a dashboard of what Wiz has done in terms of cleaning, how many square footage that has cleaned, what kind of obstacles it's had, whether what the level of, you know, whether it needed a new dust bag, you know, it's in terms of data, it's very useful for now, if I have recruited this cleaning company, fantastic. I can now see actually, you know, I can show you, Mr. Customer, this is how much space we've covered um, in terms of vacuuming within your building. So that data aspect, in, that in, in addition to uh, that level of kind of like new skill set, um, moves a whole new um, wave of adoption. Um, but we have to think about it. In the end, we're all we're all about making the the world a better place, and you know, contribute to people's happiness, and and get much more um, productivity and client satisfaction and connectiveness. And this is kind of the first kind of like area that we can apply that in extremely well. 
Okay, uh, I've got a couple of quick questions to end with. Um, sure. Uh, one is um, Ice Robotics. I've noticed the name up here next to a SoftBank Robotics. I wanted to know what that means. When I clicked on it, it seems to come back to the same website. I don't know if it's just a different sort of brand for the same thing. And the other thing is, uh, given your background at IBM, especially, and uh, I noticed that it's very interesting uh, background because you were working as a director of sales for Watson, uh, which is IBM's artificial intelligence sort of um, thing, supercomputer, I, I don't know what to call it. Uh, but, and I know it's, uh, you know, you've got a sales background, but I know uh, having spoken to other salespeople, I know that salespeople are often uh, responsible for explaining um, complex technologies. Uh, not only that, they develop uh, solutions that have never been developed before in consultation with potential clients. Uh, how to implement and how to make it work is something that is a team effort and salespeople are involved. So you know enough about technology to be able to speak, um, I'm sure, uh, you know, explain it to me. I don't understand it. But I, I wanted to ask you uh, about the programming of the, of the robot. You mentioned, I think you mentioned artificial intelligence. And what kind of... Um, things can you say about what AI is used for? I know navigation, brain OS is the thing to, that, that helps it navigate. Uh, what are the other kind of uh, refinements, if you like, that are potentially achievable with this robot? Um, what are the other things that you can do? Maybe you don't want to add functionalities because you might bring out a different machine, like you mentioned the scrubber dryer that you're going to bring out uh, next year. Uh, but what are the, what is the potential with this one that you've you've got in your um, or on the market at the moment? So, well, so if you're um, asking the question around artificial intelligence, um, I think it's 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 pretty simple. Um, uh, the, the the software that we use um, and that uh, is exclusively used in this form factor um, is uh, is a company called Brain uh, Brain Corporation. Um, Brain Corporation, um, uh, like I said earlier, they're, they're the leading um, indoor navigation specialists um, in, uh, globally currently. Um, they're about 12 to 18 months ahead of um, any other um, uh, provider. So as a result of it, um, we, we kind of have a, have a piece of technology that is operating within, uh, within WIS um, that allows um, to uh, yeah, in terms of real, you know, just as an example, it's probably easier. Um, if you if you go into um, a building and you teach it a route to to clean, and that could be up to kind of like fifteen hundred square meters. Um, that yeah, and you will press the start button, and Wiz will start uh, basically cleaning that. And the next day, you can let them run the same the same route, but it's still instructed by you and trained by you. So you, you only have to train that route once and then um, Wiz will remember that. Um, now, when Wiz, Wiz um, um, kind of goes through that route, um, it will self-adjust and it will come across different scenarios. So the artificial intelligence senses whether um, there is an obstacle um, or whether it can go a little bit closer to the wall. Um, or if there's glass and it has to kind of like, you know, kind of like sense where the opening in the glass is for the conference room. Um, all those things, they, they can be adjusted because somebody may open a, um, a door. Um, somebody may, uh, what we found in hotels, you know, maybe somebody puts a, a hotel tray uh, outside their hotel room. Um, this is where the AI kind of makes decisions um, to then go and make an adjustment. Um, that's in terms of what the um, artificial intelligence, the role of artificial intelligence and what it plays. Yeah, and this ICE Robotics, is a, uh, what, what's oh. that then? Sorry, yeah. So ICE Robotics are our partner. Uh, they are our um, uh, partner uh, that, uh, that does the service provision. Um, our, they are our distributor and service provider. So um, we, uh, we work with them very, very closely 
um, hand in hand um, to, um, to ensure that we give um, the right level of service to our clients. As you can imagine, um, just, just putting out um, a product, um, and you know, if you think about it, we started um, you know, kind of the back end of last year here in EMEA, um, and we've done incredibly um, well to um, kind of team up with Ice Robotics, who have a uh, uh, end-to-end network um, providing us with a, a, a system, well, a system, a, a, a partnership uh, to, uh, to work very closely to deliver to our clients. Um, so uh, if you think about the, the overall um, landscape of being able to deliver both in kind of like the, the, rural, um, uh, the rural areas as well, um, then, you know, you need to be able to, you know, if there's something is, is, is to happen to the machine, um, that you can service that. Um, so this is what, um, what ICE Robotics brings to us. Um, they, are, um, they are able to service with a, a very wide uh, network of partners um, across uh, a, a very large uh, geography. And, and that was really the reason why we teamed up with them. Right. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just uh, hopefully the audience can see the videos in the background that I've found uh, while you were talking. Um, uh, I was wondering, they just avoided uh, uh, an obstacle. Um, what uh, made me wonder what kind of uh, technology it uses? Is it LiDAR or something? Or, or what, what is it? what's the sensor it uses to? Yeah, it uses a combination of uh, LiDAR and ri radar. Um, so uh, to, to sense uh, what's happening. It's got a, a number of different uh, uh, cameras, um, obviously sensing what's happening around. Um, and using 3D cameras um, and uh, combination of that with the, uh, the brain software um, allows it to, uh, to then absorb that and changes its route. Right, okay, well that's, um, yeah, that's what I thought it would be, be something like that. I think one of the shots I saw, uh, let me see if I can see it now. There we go. Uh, that, that camera there, that looks familiar to me. I think it, uh, there's a, something called an Intel RealSense camera. It looks a bit like that. It might not be that, that camera, but... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a 3D, that's, a, that's the 3D camera. Okay. Yeah, that's a, it's a very, very interesting uh, technology. And um, I'm very pleased to, um, to be uh, talking about it with you. I mean, this is uh, pioneering stuff, uh, quite honestly. And yeah, a lot of people say that hardware is difficult to manufacture and it, this makes it look easy. Um, it's a nice looking machine and I uh, hope it does really, really well. Um, okay, Niels, well, uh, is there anything that I haven't asked about? And I don't know, let me look at my list. Uh, is, is there anything that you want to add that I didn't maybe ask about? Um, I think, uh, let me think about this. Um, I think we've covered uh, a lot of ground. We've gone a little bit random uh, no, in no, different no. areas, um, but, uh, but we, I think we've covered all the bits that, uh, that, uh, you, you wanted to, uh, to, to cover. So, uh, no, I think, uh, we talked about the behavioral changes that are ne needed to, uh, to adopt, uh, robotics. Um, yeah, we, I, you know, I think one thing that I can probably add that's probably fascinating, uh, for, uh, for the audience, um, we are now uh, evolving as well in, in combining um, kind of the power of robotics um, with connecting it to the, the systems that play a role within the, the larger company. So what I mean by that is, um, and then this brings a whole new conversation up because you then start talking about data sharing, but um, uh, you know, our clients, they're looking in correlating the information that they get from WISConnect, which is obviously the, 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 uh, the data that comes out of our uh, WIS unit, um, with um, say occupancy data um, of you know which people come into their office and air quality data of you know how the, the air quality is, is basically improved uh, within their, their building or decreased, whatever it may be. 
Um, and um, and in order to drive these kind of like systems together, um, it will give them quite a lot of insight how they can create more uh, productivity within their organization. So it's a, it's a very, really interesting development. And I think uh, maybe uh, in a few months we can uh, follow up on that and tell you a little bit more. Yeah, I probably should have asked you, I'll ask you now if you don't mind a quick question about coronavirus. You did mention it and touch on it and uh, uh, acknowledge that there, you know, it makes sense to have um, uh, a robot doing cleaning at a time when humans are all locked down in, you know, at their homes and all that. You probably have experienced uh, an increase in inquiries and things like that. I wonder if you wouldn't mind elaborating on it. You, I see that you've got a coronavirus hub. Personally, I kind of avoided, you know, it's a depressing subject. But uh, yeah, if, uh, yeah if, you, if you don't mind sort of explaining, um, telling us a little bit about the coronavirus and the effect it may or may not have had on your business. Okay, so I think, uh, look, it's a, it's a really, um, uh, you have to be very, very careful um, in this uh, in this this difficult time because a lot of people they draw conclusions we, we try personally to stay away linking uh, corona um, with our um, our solution um, yes um, we have been in situations where clients have asked us to operate um, with within environments where they rather had that they put uh, with in motion rather than putting lives at risk um, and obviously it's an area we can support at the same time um, you know we know that in most cases um, with um, is walked into the building um, um, you know via uh, the bottom of the feet so um, but there's no conclusive uh, research to say one thing or another so I can't say that you know that we're we kind of make a, a real difference there in the end you know it's it's just it's just vacuuming and vacuum, vacuuming is obviously important uh, to take place i think um, when it comes down to um, what we've seen with our customers is we try try to help our customers to um, to drive the deployment um, of WIS and help them as much as we can uh, taking people away from um, going unnecessarily um, in the zone but to be really honest with you, I think it's more um, a, um, a matter of a sanitization um, and looking at, you know, kind of like other solutions that are contributing to that rather than vacuuming. And, and you know, we, we've seen that with some of the hospitals um, when it comes down to uh, vacuuming. Um, hospitals are very careful with it because um, it's, it's, it creates a, a cloud. So you, you could potentially put um, corona into the air. Um, and that's obviously not something that we want to do. Um, I think uh, there's different research out of that because in some regions they, they don't believe that. In other regions like France, for an example, they, um, they forbid the, um, uh, the, the vacuuming currently um, in, in, in hospitals. But um, we have seen uh, a, a real difference by just you know, going into a lot of the off office buildings currently um, and helping them uh, to um, to not put too many people um, out there and helping them with the uh, the skeleton staff that they're using currently. What is very interesting um, is that uh, we are currently uh, developing an add-on mod module um, that is uh, in in, uh, in development that will do um, um, two things. Uh, one module will do the, um, the kind of the UVC uh, type cleaning. And the other one is a spray add-on module. But I can't tell you too much. It's still in development. Um, we hope that it will come out towards the end of the year. Um, and in that way, you can then deploy WIS um, with the add-on modules to help fight, fight the, the, the battle um, of, uh, yeah, that we are facing yeah, within the industry. Okay, Niels, thank you very much uh, for your time and your insights. Uh, I was hoping to um, 
Uh, end on a more positive note, but I, f I forgot my positive question, Tian. With but uh, yeah, good luck with um, everything, and I'm sure everything will go really well um, with or without the coronavirus uh, hanging over us all. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Send us an email at sales at robotics and automation news dot com to register for one of our many upcoming webinars. And if you'd like us to host your webinar, we have a range of options, including long-term lead generation packages and marketing campaigns. We look forward to hearing from you soon.